I think it began when I was around eight years old and we were on our summer holidays, stuck at home like you are now. And my dad sent us some homework and he said, I want you to write about your favorite planet. So at the time mine was Saturn because it had the rings. But the great thing was I started looking at pictures and I saw this amazing picture of the earth from far away as if I was standing on the moon. I'd never seen it like that before. There was these kind of white stripes and I realized that they were the clouds and then there was blue bits and then I realized that that was the ocean. And then there was kind of green and brown bits and then I realized they were countries. And I couldn't believe what I was looking at. And I would just stare at it. And of course, that was the first selfie because every single person that ever existed on our planet was in that photograph, with the exception of the three people on the spacecraft taking that photograph. And that was it. When I saw that picture, I said, one day I am going to stand on the moon and I'm going to see the Earth from far, far away. And that's where my dream began. I knew what I wanted to be when I was eight years old. In my house, nobody ever said anything about what you can and cannot do, whether you're a boy or a girl. It was about what was possible. So when I was your age, I wanted to do it. And I had absolutely no doubt whatsoever that I was going to achieve it. So I always wrote, I loved writing. I've always kept diaries. So this is a diary of when I was, I think I was 11 or 12 and actually, Yesterday, uh, in 1981, I made my confirmation. So I have it here in my diary. And here is another one, um, the next year. And I was very good that particular year because I actually completed all of my diary entries that year. And then I have all my homework notebooks. I hope you have a homework notebook. So I would keep track of the homework that I would have to do every day. And then I'd put a tick beside it. So I always loved keeping track of the things that I would do every day and writing them down and logging them, even my homework. So I was always writing and here in my autograph book as well, I would pretend that I was a nuclear scientist, you see here, and I have the word laboratory, which was really interesting. And then I have my science book, which I absolutely loved. And I have kept every single lab book ever since. And if I open it up to you, look how long I would spend drawing my experiments and then writing them up in that way. I cannot tell you how much I loved this book. And I even have here some of my test results and I got 94%. Oh yeah, I was always a really good student in science. Loved it, absolutely loved it. So writing was always a part of me. So the hardest thing was telling everybody that I wanted to go to space. So that was the first thing. And the really interesting thing was because I love space and science so much, lots of people just were delighted to hear me say it and they really wanted to help me. They said, we'll help you, what can we do? So years and years and years later, I went to visit Black Rock Castle Observatory in Cork and they said, we want to help you. And so they introduced me to all the people that they knew working at the European Space Agency. Then I got a scholarship, so I got given money by the European Space Agency to go on an amazing course called the Space Studies Program in America. And I met loads of people, lots of people who wanted to go to space just like me, teachers and scientists, astronauts. I met loads of astronauts. And suddenly I saw a path. So when I was 15 and 16 and I couldn't meet anybody who was able to help me get to space, now I was in a room full of people who made my dream totally normal. And then I got invited to take part in this mission in the middle of the desert in America as if I was on Mars. So for over two weeks, I lived as if I was on Mars on a mission called a simulated Mars mission the Mars Desert Research Station. And we lived as if we were on Mars. So, take a breath in and breathe out. We can do that really easily on Earth, right? Not so easy on Mars, because you know why? There's no oxygen on Mars. There's carbon dioxide. So if you were to go outside and breathe in, you go, <coughs> So what do you have to do? Yeah, you have to wear a spacesuit and a helmet. So every time we went outside, we put on our spacesuits. And we would go outside on missions, 
or spacewalks, or they're also known as EVAs. And we would go out to collect samples because some of the people that I was with, they were people that specialised in studying the rocks of Mars. It's called geology. And people that were interested in if there's any life on Mars, they're called astrobiologists. And they had to go outside and collect samples. It was an actual science experiment. So every day we had something to do. It's actually very similar to the way we are living now because of this virus. We had to have a schedule and we had to stick to it every day and we had to work together and we had to tell each other what we were going to be doing every day. And then if we wanted to go outside on our spacewalks or also known as EVAs, we had to ask mission control, which were miles and miles and miles away and say, can we please go outside? And they would say, yes, you can go outside. Why do you want to go outside? What do you want to do when you go outside? And we tell them, well, we want to collect examples. And then we would have to have reports in every day before nine o'clock. We had two hours every day to send our reports in. And I took photographs and I took loads of movies and I wrote about it. And that's what I did. And I learned that I'm really good at being able to talk about space and sharing stories. And after that mission ended, I realized, that's it. That's how I'm going to get to space. I'm going to write stories. I'm going to take pictures. I'm going to make videos. I'm going to talk to people. And I'm going to share every single moment of my experiences. And I'm going to be so good at it, somebody is going to send me to space to do it. Thank <laughs> you.